Okay, here we go. Let's get one. All of these ones have the connectors cut, but every once in a while you have one that is not. Let's get this one. Okay. This one's a good one. All right, these are the MH1 cell battery packs, right? These are, well, officially I'm selling them a scooter, but they're from uh, a small mobility vehicle, right? And there's a ton of these available. Uh, they have great cells. And up until now, they were, well, they were kind of bricked. You know, in order to use them, you have to do a bunch of weird stuff. Like you have to cut this uh, BMS that is stock that they come with. And it's, it turns out it's really well made and it's got really high grade components but you couldn't use it, right? Because it was off and uh, we've been trying to get it to work for a while and we couldn't. So what we had to do was have to take it off and then install our own BMS. This is a third party BMS that you can buy on Amazon and then put it in here and it works, right? It, it totally works, except it's a bit of work because as you can see, this has all that goo in there, conformal coating, right? It's potting. So you'd have to remove all that stuff and desolder all that, all the connectors in there. And it's, you know, it's, it could be, it's work, right? And so all this time I was thinking if there was a way that we can use that BMS that's in here, that would make these batteries so much better because then basically you don't have to do a lot of work, right? You can use them as is. So I was waiting for that day and that day is here. Let me show you how to get these working. These two batteries here are on uh, molested, right? They're, most of them have the thing cut out, but let's try and work on this. This right here is an STM32. It's just a 32-bit ARM Cortex microcontroller, right? Alex, that is more uh, talented than me in electronics and writing code, has used this microcontroller, he has sniffed the CAN messages that, uh, the communication that goes between this and the other equipment. And now he has uh, programmed this microcontroller to spit out the necessary CAN commands to turn on that BMS on this battery, right? So all we have to do is connect that in here, four plugins, and then do one jumper and this battery should be on. So let's do that. Here are the instructions that I got from Alex. He has plotted this whole connector here and then he gives you instructions how to wake the board, right? So basically have to, the red is five volts, yellow is can high, green is can low, and then black is ground. And then orange and pink, those are used to turn on the DC to DC that turns on the, the five volt. Um, so let's try that, right? So let's see, this is the this is the board. It's got the wires and they're color coded. So they're, you just have to match them. So here's yellow, here we go. Red, green is all the way to the corner over here. And then black is right next to it. So there you go, now this is connected. But as you can see here, there is no power. So now to turn on, uh, you have to short out these two cables, the orange and the pink. And these are the orange and pink. And look at that, as soon as you do that, then it turns on the DC to DC that gives this little guy five volts, right? Okay, so let's disconnect this guy. This is just a little, little jumper. And now we'll put our load in here. I have made a cable, right? The, these ones are the charger port and then this is the motor port. This is the load port, right? So if I just connect it in here, as you can see, there's nothing, right? So there's no power coming out. But if we put the jumper on here now so that this microcontroller now turns on, and start spitting out the CAN messages, then, whoa, 
What's going on there? How come it's not turning itself on? There we go. So now we have power. How much voltage? 36 volts. So it's at nominal. It's not fully charged right now, but let's see if we can put some load on it. Right, so here we go. I just connected uh, DC to DC, and then I'm charging another battery. And here you can see the amount of power that it's putting out. So it's putting about three amps into there. This is that's a fully charged battery, so it can't. I can't really load it too much right but there you go this is uh it's capable of putting uh, a load probably about 10 amps i'll charge it and then i'll test these batteries and then we'll give you a full report on how they do here is one of the quirks i think with these batteries remember these are from mobility vehicles so for some reason i, I kind of make sense so when you have the charger plugged in then it disables the load side, right? And that makes sense because you don't want to be able to drive away and tear apart the charging cord, right? So when you do that, let's see if it turns it off. Well, maybe not. Maybe not this one. On the other one, it did it. Hmm, we'll have to experiment more with that, but it hasn't shut it off, so maybe not. We should be able to charge and have a load going on this, which is what you would want in a situation where you have these maybe for a power wall, right? So you want to be able to have solar maybe charging them, and you still want to be able to use that power. Ah, there we go. Now it turned off. So no, that is the case. So maybe that we are able to maybe change that. Uh, if we can reprogram maybe uh, the commands here, maybe, or maybe that's programmed into the microcontroller that's on the BMS and that is not the thing. So we'll, we'll have to explore that option there. But as of right now, yeah, it seems like, I guess now what we have to check is to see if we can charge the battery the uh the load side so these are challenges that we still have to explore on these guys but definitely one step closer because we got them working and now you can use the onboard bms which is very high quality and it's already integrated so it's very little work to get these packs to work uh, by the way these will work if you just parallel the sense cables and the and the power cables then it's one big battery so now it's just double the size so you can have a, a bunch of these and then just parallel them all right as you can see this is gonna be ongoing but i was kind of excited today i wanted to show you that at the very least we got them working and now there's a hack that makes them work now we just have to modify them a little bit too so they can they're usable in our application like storage when it comes to using them on e-bikes or skateboards or scooters, then there's no problem. They're kind of set up for that right now. So if that's your intended use, they're kind of ready to go. All you have to do is buy this little chip, which I think it's gonna be, I think it's like $5 worth of parts. Uh, we're probably gonna uh, release this open source so that you can, you know, if you know how to code it yourself, then you can do that or you can just buy it code it uh you know encoded with the with, with what it needs to do to wake those batteries up right so uh i don't know when that's gonna happen but i think we're gonna order about 100 of those like very soon like maybe today or tomorrow and so then as soon as they're done and they're on the website then i'll make a video uh showing you how to use them and how to program them and all sorts of stuff right so until then uh see you in the next video bye